Town Talk Radio Productions brings you this edition of the Town Talk Show, where you'll get information and insight on what's happening all across Terry County, including city, county and school news, civic events, people of interest, and much, much more. And now, here's Town Talk. Good morning, and welcome to the Town Talk Show. This is Kelsey Slaughter. And we are going to be speaking with Kim Holland of the Living Water Foursquare Church and Eric Martinez of Faith Family Fellowship. They've got a big event coming up that they want to share all about. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and take a short commercial break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. When you leave this life, how will you be remembered? The legacy you leave will not be measured in dollars and cents or by years lived, but rather by what you accomplished with your life. The measure of our life is not its duration, but its donation. We are here to help your family when you lose a family member. Ratliff Funeral Home in Seminole, Denver City, Seagraves, and Brownfield. We're here for you. Forward march to the next generation and a brand new age. To the future and the future of tough. Introducing the all-new Ford F-150, the first and only pickup with a high-strength, military-grade aluminum alloy body, up to 700 pounds lighter, so it can haul more than any half-ton pickup on the planet. Over 100 patents, so you can work even smarter. And every single square millimeter tougher. Towing the most of any half-ton pickup. With the muscle to move the world. And the brains to change it. This is the all-new Ford F-150. The future of tough. Go by Stanley Ford Lincoln, located at 1708 Lubbock Road in Brownfield. Or call 637-7541. Stanley Ford Lincoln. You're just a short drive from Big Savings. And welcome back to the Town Talk Show. Once again, this is Kelsey Slaughter, and we are here to learn about the event called the Silver Ring Thing. Eric, can you just kind of let us know what that is and what's going on? Yeah, Kelsey, thank you for having us on. Um, you know, I'll give a little plug for Kim because uh, her family is, is kind of new to town. They've been here a few years, but they're new to town, and they got involved with the Minister Alliance, uh, which if you don't know... Out there listening, the Minister Alliance is uh, multiple churches, all denominations coming together um, to work and serve our community as one. You can do a lot more things uh, with everybody pitching in uh, financial assistance, volunteer assistance to reach Brownfield. And uh, the Minister Alliance you've had Nick on has made some big changes over the last year. They've they've changed kind of their outlook on what we're going to do to reach the community and how that's going to work. Um, they still do help out with uh, monetary um you know donations to people who who fill out the forums and pass for utility help or gas help or you know or things like that um they still help transients that come through town as much as we can with fuel or even a place to stay a good hot meal but one of the things that i think we'd all been praying for is what are some other things we can do to reach our community um and so about the time we're praying and thinking about that kim comes in and she asks us about an event uh, called the Silver Ring thing, uh, which I had previously had um, done before at a previous church I was at, so I knew enough about it that I was kind of her cheerleader to really try and push this thing through. But it was really her, it was her heart and her idea to offer something to the teenagers in Brownfield uh, that is a new standard to the way they live their life uh, when it comes to love, purity, sex. Um, just their bodies and, and what God's plan is for them compared to the standard set by social media and by TV. And and so she just really had a heart for that. And we got behind her. Minister Alliance decided to fund it in part um, and then see if any of the community churches as well would be willing to also help fund it. And we got some really big sponsors, um, Terry County Veterinary Hospital, uh, of course, the Minister Alliance and Metal Farmers Co-op all pitched in to pay upfront cost and that makes the event free 
for our students in Brownfield and free is good. Yeah, free is good. And so we're hoping to get them there and I'll let Kim kind of uh, dive into a little bit more about the details and how even she learned about it and came through it and, and talk more about it. All right. Well, thanks again for having us. Um, yeah, you know, at our church, we had been looking at the community and really thinking and brainstorming and praying about how we could have an impact. What are the needs that we're seeing and how can we help in a relevant way? And one of the concerns that we've seen, so many of us, is um, among our youth, not only high school, but middle school as well, <coughs> excuse me, um, with teen pregnancies and STDs. I have a friend at the health department, and she regularly sees middle school kids coming in with STDs. And, uh, you know, they just get this message from the media, from everywhere else, that it's just cheap, it's just easy, and, and they don't see the long-term consequences. Um, and, again, we see so many um, really children, youth having children, and they're not ready. And it really diminishes their opportunities as they get older. And so we were looking to see how we could begin to have an impact on that and to present a different message to them. And... Um, we were getting ready to meet at the Ministerial Alliance, and I just by chance spoke to a friend in Washington I hadn't spoken to in about six months, and she told me about the Silver Ring thing, that she had gone, and that it was just a really well, well done event. And um, I believe, especially in towns like this, where we don't have large, large churches with multiple staff, you know, we can do a lot more if we work together as a community. And um, so working together... All the churches, and, and as Eric mentioned, some of our business partners, we were able to do something much bigger than any of our churches could have done alone. So we're excited to bring in uh, the Silver Ring Thing team. Uh, they tour nationally, so they go all over the country presenting this message. And it's going to be a concert-style event, so it's going to be high energy. It's going to be music and drama and testimonials and <clears> – excuse me – and um, – and so they're going to come in and present another message about love and sex and second chances and best choices. And and they are going to share their own stories. A lot of these, these people who are coming, they're not 50-year-olds coming in to preach at the kids. <laughs> these are all 20-somethings. It's a team of 12 20-somethings who are single themselves, and they're on this journey themselves. So they understand the struggle. They understand uh, the commitment, and they understand the benefits. And so they share their stories, their failures, and their successes. And I've read testimonials from kids who've gone to these events, and I think it's been really, really impacting for them. So we're excited about it. It's going to be on Saturday, February 25th at the Middle School Auditorium from 7 to 9 p.m. As Eric mentioned, it is free. Um, if the kids want, they can buy a silver ring for $20 as a symbol and commitment, um, a symbol and a reminder of the commitment they're making to stay sexually pure and to postpone getting sexually involved. And at the same time of the event, in the cafeteria, there's going to be a session for parents. So we'd encourage parents to come out as well. And uh, the leaders are going to be talking with them about how to talk with their teens and about really how important their voice is. A lot of parents don't realize that your kids really do listen to you. And your voice is so important. And even though you just see the rolling eyes, really what you say is having an impact. And so they want to help you to know how to support your, your teen and their commitment. And what... <clears throat> ages would you think this would be because that's kind of sensitive information right right thank so. you yeah middle school and high school so from about 11 or 12 on up and uh, just know it's not going to be graphic it's not the purpose isn't a sex ed talk um so they there are sensitive of the different ages in the room and they feel like that's more appropriately addressed by parents anyway right but but yeah middle school and up and it is just it is abstinence education is what they're teaching right right they're talking about yeah the, the benefits of of waiting really and and the cost to to them as individuals of getting involved sexually when they're just really not ready and um what what kind of are the parents going to be learning in the parent session is it just how to talk to their kids about this topic in general or what exactly? Yeah, well, I think part of it is um, they're going to show the parents some statistics and help them to see um, how important their voice is, you know, by, by different surveys, different things that they've done. Um, that really the major influence on, on teens as far as their opinions and their decision making regarding sex is coming from their parents. And most parents probably don't believe that. <laughs> so part of, the, part of the talk is to help them to see that that really is true and to, to validate them and their, their place and their importance. Um, and then, yes, also just to kind of give them tools. I think they'll probably have books for sale too and things like that, but they're going to be um, giving them tools to know how to talk about these things with the kids. 
And is this a Christian-based organization? Is it denominational? How does that it's, It is Christian-based. It's not uh, set on any particular denomination. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's Christian-based. Okay, so that's going to be in there as well. Yes. Yeah, and it, when I've done this in the past, we did it in a, They have multiple ways to do it. You can do it as a more like a D-NOW style where they send you curriculum and you give that out to your kids and then you go through a weekend or you do it like this where they actually bring their event in and then you can surround your church with whatever you want to do in that situation. Um, but they have um, Bibles, Silver Ring Thing Bibles okay. that you can buy for your kids that have testimonials in them after certain scriptures, kind of like you would a, a teen study Bible or something like that. So a lot of parents will get those for their kids. Um they're real big on the parent side of it. Um, even when we did ours, we had a parent meeting um, because they gave us the curriculum to then speak to the parents. And it was exactly what Kim talked about. Parents understanding that their voice is the first voice that those kids will hear. And what the parents' influence is about these things and what they teach their kids is the first line of defense. Um, because if you don't, then they're going to go find it from somewhere. And then, unfortunately, they find it from social media, they find it from movies, they find it from other friends who are not making best choices. And it's because, as parents, we don't realize the importance of this part. And and I don't know if it's it's something that we've done as a family. We, we started younger, even mm-hmm. six, seven, eight years old, just beginning to talk with our kids about their bodies and best choices. But I think parents wait so long, and then then they're almost embarrassed when their kid's 14 years old at that point to bring that up because the kid's now embarrassed also. And it's like, I don't want to talk to you about that. But the truth is, by that age, most of them have already in some way, some sort of fashion experienced something either visually or audibly or sometimes physically. Right. And so the parent is behind... um, behind at that point instead of starting early and so they really push um, that aspect for the parents and we want to encourage all parents to come even if your kid says well I ain't going to that well you come mm-hmm. and you come sit in that session and, and listen and learn All we, we encourage all pastors youth ministers to come and get involved as well because it's, it's the follow up that is going to make the biggest difference we've been doing a study here in our church about um, receiving and reproducing God's word. And so that's the idea of discipleship. So these kids that make these decisions, if you're there and that's one of your kids, that gives you another avenue to hold them accountable to something they've committed to. And that follow-up and that discipleship with that young person as they grow is the thing that they're looking for as a silver ring thing. They say, yeah, we can come put on a great event, but if we don't have adults there, they're going to back these kids and continue to encourage them and answer even more questions as they come up then, you know, it's going to be void because the discipleship is really what changes lives. And right. um, when I did this event, you know, some of my students that, that made that commitment, they did it, you know, when we did it on a weekend, we did it in front of the church on Sunday morning with their parents with them, mm-hmm. a vocal, um, you know, this is my decision to remain pure, to make the best choices with my life, my body. Um, and the testimonies that come from that, even I, I've done a couple weddings from kids who I took through this event who kept that all the way through but the standard is not that anymore right um if we're being honest and and we can just say you know you can take a group of teenagers i did this recently about 15 of them and i said make me a list of your your priorities for a spouse i want to i want a list and i gave them a week to do it and they came back and they all had loves god was in there you know a lot of them and uh, you know, they're some were kind of funny, like <laughs> wears a size 11 shoe and just weird things. But, you know, they're teenagers. But none of them, 15 kids, none of them put, I want my spouse to be a virgin. Mm-hmm. None of them put that. They, they, that wasn't even on their thought process. Right. And so I brought it up. I said, why didn't y'all put that? And their literal response was, is that even possible? Hmm. Like, is that possible today? Wow. And it was very soon after that that Kim came and said, hey, I have this idea. And... I knew at that point, I did, that I wanted it and was willing to do whatever it took to get here. And I'm thankful that the Minister Alliance saw the need and was willing to say, hey, even if we get no funding, we'll pay for all of it. But if we can get half, we'll pay the other half. And that that was a great, I think, to me, a big step forward for our Minister Alliance and our community as a whole to say, let's do something together. So. One one last thing that I'd like to mention too is, 
you know, it's never too late. I mean, so if you've got, you know, 16 year old, a 17 year old, and they've already been sexually active, this is not going to be an event to bring condemnation at all. In fact, Mm -hmm. uh, they talked about that. You know, if you go on their website, it's www.silverringthing.com, and they've got videos and testimonials, and you can see clips of other shows and really get an idea what kind of event it's going to be like. And it talks about that about kids who've come in who've made bad decisions in the past, but they come and they hear this message, and they say it's just like the the guilt and the condemnation and the shame just washes away and they walk out a new kid. And so um, it really isn't about bringing condemnation, but about giving a fresh start and, and a way to, to make a way forward. And you kind of touched a little bit on it, Eric, but you've been a part of this before. What's the impact? How long does it last? I mean, do you see kids like slowly start to take their rings off? Or <laughs> <laughs> do? do you see them continuing it? Well, again, and that comes back to the accountability and discipleship that comes from what they've learned. Um, most of my kids, um, we would do it every other year. We would do D now and then silver ring thing, D now, silver ring thing, kind of opposite. So that every two years I was offering it for new kids that were coming. Um, most of them wore it on a necklace. Like it wasn't really something that they wore on their finger all because they were mm-hmm. athletes and they're, right. you know, getting it all sweaty. And so they would, they would wear it as a necklace. Um, the thing that was important to me, which the silver ring thing really doesn't, with the big event, it doesn't allow it as much, but it was when they made that commitment in front of their parents. Because when you're able to do it in that sort of setting, and the parents are also involved in the decision-making process of, you know, we're going to support you in this. We're going to – so basically they're saying, so you're telling us to hold you accountable to these standards. And the kid is, is saying, yes, there was actually a little – it was like a little – I walked them through it. So in other words, I read a part – then the parents responded. Kind of a ceremony. And, yeah, ceremony. And then the kids responded. And so I still have that. And that that's what similar to what our church will do the following Sunday when we when we take these kids that came and were apart. And um, that's that's the important thing. So the ring is just a ring. It's the commitment that, that we're honoring. It's the, that's the commitment that God honors that we make. And so um, to me, it's not, you know, I don't know percentage-wise how many of them follow through with that, but... I know some did, and mm-hmm. so it made it worth it. Right. Because I know I've done weddings for kids that, like I said, that did that. Mm-hmm. And, and at their wedding, I was able to, to share that. And same thing with the second chances. Um, I had, unfortunately, more kids that were excited about the second chance to right. remain pure from that point forward mm-hmm. um, than the opposite. But for that kid, it's, again, it's life-changing because they realize – that guilt-free ability to say God is forgiven, mm-hmm. me, I can forgive myself. That's probably the biggest part of it. Right. Um, I can forgive myself for allowing myself to get to that place, and now I'm going to make a commitment from this point forward. Um, and those were huge for us as well. So it, it just gives another opportunity for, and, and again, a lot of people say, you know, you're not going to reach, you know, the 1,000, 1,500 kids that are in this community with one event, and you're right. Um, but I'd rather be the minister alliance in the church that says, you know what, but we did what we could to give them that opportunity. We made it free. We encouraged people to come, and that's all we can do. We can't force them to be there, but we can offer those events for it's them to present, go to. present an alternative point of view. Yeah. Right, another yeah, a compelling standard, yeah, mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. Well, we are going to go ahead and take a short break, and we com- when we come back, we'll get a few more details about the silver ring thing. Stay tuned. Are you tired of stopped up sinks and cold showers? We can rescue you at Rescue Plumbing. Cody Churchill has over 20 years of experience in the plumbing business and provides quality work at a reasonable price. So whether you need installation or a complete bathroom remodel, call Rescue Plumbing at 806-891-9617 and get a free estimate today. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at Rescue Plumbing LLC. Rescue Plumbing, ready to come to your rescue anytime, any place. Hey, uh, let me finish this text. Okay, I'm good. If you're like me in the morning, you're busy. Sorry, I had to shave and brush my teeth. Like I said, busy, busy, busy. Ah, that was a nice shower. But one thing you should never be too busy for in the morning. Okay, pal, fetch. Is a real breakfast at McDonald's. All right, now we got to run. Literally, training for a marathon. Make a busy morning better with a real breakfast, like a classic egg McMuffin sandwich, crispy golden hash browns, and a freshly brewed McCafe coffee. Hello, can't talk now. I'm busy. Yep, doing a jingle. Ba 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 ba. At participating McDonald's. 
Get on down to your local Kubota dealer today, where the deals have never been hotter on new Kubota tractors. You can get low payments for up to 84 months with 0% APR, incredible customer instant rebates, and a six-year limited powertrain warranty on new BX, BL, and MX tractors. There have never, ever been deals like these. Now through December 31st, 2016. Call toll-free 1-800-794-4992 for details about costs and terms. For complete warranty details, see Kubota.com or your authorized Kubota dealer. Welcome back to the Town Talk Show. This is Kelsey Slaughter, and we're talking with Kim Holland and Eric Martinez about the abstinence education event they are putting on called the Silver Ring Thing. And this is open to the public, but what if you guys were talking about how the churches are a part of it? Mm -hmm. What if someone's not part of a church, or they think, well, I'm not necessarily a Christian? You can't, am I still welcome? How does that work? Absolutely. Yeah, I, and I'll let Kim talk about this a little more, but the idea here is not to create an event that um, sole purpose is to force people into this conversation about God necessarily. Um, they will, and I think all these kids will probably have testimony that says, you know, without God, I wouldn't have been able to follow through completely with this commitment because of his strength. I was able to get through it. But there are other reasons why it's important to make better choices with our bodies. Um, and I'll let Kim talk a little bit about that because it's not just about the moral aspect of it. It's um, it's future for those kids and their future kids. Yeah, that's right. What, one example is just their physical health. You know, we see a lot of kids who are, like, as I mentioned earlier, who are coming in with S STDs and different issues and some of these things that are incurable that are going to be with them for the rest of their lives. And if they had just waited, um, then those things wouldn't have to be part of their lives. So there's physical consequences that they can um, avoid by, by not engaging in sex when they're that young. Um, and also, uh, as far as their future opportunities, uh, a lot of kids, boys and girls, I think maybe more so on the girl side, but when they have children, and again, depending on what kind of support from they have from their family, they may not be able to go to college, they may not be able to get a good job, so they may be kind of stuck to a life of dependency where they're just depending on either family members or the government or the ministerial alliance or somebody to, to help them just make ends meet because they weren't able to go out and prepare themselves for a job because now they have a child. And, and you know, having a child should be a wonderful thing. And, right. and it is a wonderful thing. I love my girls. But for some of these kids who aren't just simply aren't ready, then it becomes a burden and they can resent the kids. And then sometimes we see this also turns into child abuse mm -hmm. where we've got really children having children. And so so it, it really is a big issue. It's 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 more than just a moral issue, as Eric said. Um, it affects them physically, financially, opportunities wise, and and just their whole family life dynamic uh, going forward. And what if a parent's listening and they're interested in coming, and they have maybe a sixth grader, and they've never had any type of conversation about this topic before with their kids? Do they need to before taking them? Do they need to talk to them about anything, or what would you tell that parent? Again, in my experience, I've never been to one of their events, but it really, it's going to open the door to begin those conversations. Because if you're a parent who at this point, whether it's sixth grade or up, has never had any conversation with them, this is a better starter than you just going, hey, I want to talk to you about right. choices, right? Because they, they're they going to shut down. In most cases, if you don't have that type of uh, relationship with them already to talk about those kinds of things they'll shut down and they uh, they won't be open but if you take them to this event and they're able to to get that on their mind and and they then say talk to your parents about it which they will do then they come home or you're like hey i was sitting in the back what did you think tell me about what your thought process was it's the open door that you've been waiting for mm -hmm. um and so that's what i would recommend for parents who've never had those conversations take them to this event because it'll open, it'll be the starter that you need to begin that open conversation with your child. Um, and again, it, it comes down to that individual's child's choice. Right. And that's what they will, they will push it on. You can't become active with your body and say, well, it's my parents' fault. You can, but it's your choice. And they're trying to put it back on these teenagers in a way that is, we're going to present to you an alternative, a new standard a new way of approaching how you look at this situation that our culture has made into money and <laughs> popularity and everything else um, and set a new standard for you. And then you have to choose as a young person what you want for your future. 
Um, and then they're going to share the testimonies about what they've seen, people that didn't make the best choices and how it affected them financially and you know for the rest of their lives. So it, it's going to be a great event, and and I think Kim has done a great job, and we're hoping to, to do a, a good job even through this interview to say this is not a church thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not it's not you're coming in and you're going to get – you're going to get churched over and, and preached at. I mean, that's not what it's about. Um, and, and that's not the, the only avenue that they take. It'll be an element, but it's not the only element. And that's the other reason we really liked it is because you, the kids that are not involved in churches that, you know, feel they wouldn't, you know, overwhelmed by going to something like this. No, you're coming to a concert. You're coming to an event. You're coming to a live, fun um, thing that, that – teaches you about best choices second chances and so that's why we i encouraged them to do it because it it doesn't just speak to the kids that are involved in church it's everybody so we want to get the word out because we want people to know they can volunteer i mean that's i'm sure another thing if you're out there listening or you you know find this on facebook how can i help i don't have any kids i'm older um i'm 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 a college kid i'm a whatever um we need volunteers um We've been blessed. I'll let Kim tell you how many people have already stepped up and filled in spots like they have places for them to stay, food, all that's been taken care of already. Yes, um, because we're providing host homes, uh, host families for them to, to the stay. Again, it's 12 team members that are coming. It's six young men and six young ladies. So we have host homes for them, and, um, and different churches around town are providing meals and snacks for the team. And so we're just taking care of them, and, and they're doing this to kind of help to keep the cost down. Um, and, it, and it helps them to have just a home-quick meal because they travel, I think, nine months of the year wow. and so instead of just eating at subway yeah. <laughs> day after day after day they can have some nice home cooked meals so yeah we really appreciate all the support that we've had but definitely the day of the event there's going to be a lot of things to do whether it's moving tables or helping uh you know size kids for rings or uh, handing out materials to the parent session there, there's lots of opportunities yeah 5 30 is what they're recommending are the some volunteers can begin to show up so okay. 5 30 to 9 30 5 30 they'll begin the process of setting up they'll have probably a meeting with those volunteers here's how we're gonna bring kids in you know and here's where we need you to be um as well as some follow-up you know if we got kids that need to come forward and visit with people we want you to, if you're willing we want you to be some of those um here's what we'll do in the parent meeting so 5 30 to 9 30 is the time frame that we need volunteers from Um, i'm in charge of gathering all those volunteers we've got uh, flyers out to churches for them to sign up um, and commit to hey i'll be there so it's not necessarily like i'm putting people in certain spots as much as i'm making sure we have enough which is 25 is what they're wanting at least but if we can have 45 that's that's even better that's that much more support Mm -hmm. for them to be able to say hey kids look around like, you know, in some cities we come to, we get 10 adult volunteers. You've got 40, 50, 75 adults here supporting what your, the decision you're making. These that would be you. a statement mm-hmm. from Brownfield, from the those who believe in, in the commitment and in second chances to just show up and say, I'm giving up my Saturday evening just to come be with you. I don't know who you are, but I know this is important, and I know second chances were important for me, or I know um, – you know, making the better choices with my body was important to me. And so I want to be here to support you when you do that. Some of these kids' parents won't be there, won't, you know, they'll just come with a friend and the parent won't even know. So right. having an adult around, they go, wow, that person came just to make sure I was okay, you know. Um, so if you're interested in volunteering, talk to your, your first, talk to your church and see if they've um, got the material or if they know about it. Because the best thing would be is if you want to volunteer and your church goes, what are you talking about? Hey, call us, um, and that way we can get you the information, and you can bring your students. But if you're not involved uh, in a local church, maybe you go to an, uh, uh, one out of town or something, contact me, um, 806-887-5400. I'll take your name down, um, and then when you get there at 530 on Saturday, we'll put you to work. I mean, it's that simple. Um, so even if you don't get your name on a list, show up at 530 or 730 or whatever time you can be there and say, hey, I'm here to help. Where, where do you need me? And that's the that's the remaining part of what we need from the community. Okay, and quickly before we close out, Kim, would you just let us know uh, when to show up if we're just bringing our students, when to show up, at the day, the time? Sure, it's the last Saturday in February, Saturday 25th at 7 7 p.m., mm-hmm. 7 to 9, yeah, okay. 7 to 9, at the Brownfield Middle School Auditorium. And again, to look at the event a little bit more, you can look at www.silverringthing.com. Okay. 
Doors right. open at 6.30, so you can come a little early. Right, thank um, you. And then at 7, the event will start, and then the parent session will start at 7 as well. And maybe if you think you might want some of those uh, rings or something like that, just that bring some cash if you... Right, $20. Right. Yeah. They'll have them there. You know, uh, the church, you, you know, some churches are paying for them. Some are paying half, you know, okay. just however you work that out. But if... If you as a parent is listening and you know, I want my child to have one of those, just as a reminder, because mm-hmm. it is a reminder, and every time you put it on, you're reminded of that commitment, um, so they, they can purchase those at the event for $20. All right. Kim Holland and Eric Martinez, thank you so much for coming in and sharing about this event. You guys, this has been the Town Talk Show with Kelsey Slaughter. Have a blessed day. You've been listening to The Town Talk Show, a broadcast of Town Talk Radio Productions. If you would like to comment on our show or promote your civic or church event, or if you have an idea for an interesting story, give us a call at 806-637-0030 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, or you can drop us a line at info at towntalkradio.com. You can also follow us on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.